Chapter 17 Operation Popeye When the party arrived back at the hollow, the stag, squirrels and rabbits bounded over to them. How did it go? Two young rabbits and a squirrel said in unison, hopping up to Pip with twitching noses. I think we did all right, she said, jumping off Lucia's back. Hans gave her a little wink in agreement as he dismounted G.I. Joe and, smiling, she scampered to the umbrella, gently running her paws along its carved silver handle and black tarpaulin and finding it unscathed, she sighed contentedly. Pip did very well, Madame Fourcard said, climbing down from Leon's speckled wing and tenderly placing a paw across her shoulders. She sure did, G.I. Joe cooed, giving Hans a nudge with his beak. And this fella too. We are proud to have you both among us, the hedgehog continued. With two telephone lines now sabotaged, the enemy will struggle to alert one another when the train falls tonight. Let us thank our new friends and Pip's umbrella. As Noah's Ark clapped their paws or feathers together or stamped their hooves, a rosy glow appeared beneath both Pip and Hans's whiskers. Hans, Madame Fourcard said, leading the rat to one side and beckoning Leon and G.I. Joe to follow her. Pip and Lucia joined them, standing beside Henri, the stag, at the edge of the hollow. Tonight the train will cross the river through the forest behind the monastery of Beck. It is quiet there. The only humans are monks praying at their beds, so we will go unnoticed. G.I. Joe and Leon, you will drop Hans and myself on the bridge, then retreat to separate trees. The further away from each other, the better. We must avoid multiple catches, but keep sight of us while we meet the beavers. A grave expression crossed the hedgehog's face. Remember, Hans, if the worst happens and you are captured by the enemy, Every life in Noah's Ark depends on your silence. No matter how badly they torture you, you must never speak of us or you will be killing us all. You have my word, the rat said earnestly. What can I do, Pip said, stepping forward. Please, I want to come with you. Absolutely not, ma petite chérie, Madame Fourcade said firmly. Plan Violet was unexpectedly perilous today and I will not endanger your life like that again. You have already risked too much for one so young. The hedgehog paused, gently taking Pip's face in her paws. You remind me of my hoglets who I sent to live out the war in a secret place where they could be safe. My heart weeps for them every day but my duty to them, my country and my comrades is inescapable. I must fight for a better world for you to grow up in. War is not a place for kittens. It is time for you to rest now. But I can help, Pip said, but to her fury, Hans and G.I. Joe shook their heads. It's all right, Lucia cooed. You can stay with me. They'll be back before you know it. Pip frowned, feeling her hackles rise. Don't worry, Henri said, noticing the nervous expression on Hans and G.I. Joe's faces. I'll keep an eye on her too. We must all rest the hedgehog said firmly, seeing Pip open her mouth to protest, especially before tonight. Even you, Cherie. Now, let's eat. The group nodded in agreement and walked together to the far end of the hollow where Noah's Ark's mice, rabbits and squirrels were preparing nuts, berries and seeds in a large pile. As G.I. Joe and Hans fondly bantered between mouthfuls, Lucia fluttered to Pip, who was eating hungrily beside Henri the stag. How did you become a member of Churchill's secret animal army, she cooed. I've never known it to have a mouse kitten in its ranks. That's because you're not a member of Churchill's secret animal army, sweetie, G.I. Joe said, gazing fondly at his mate before turning to Pip. Little lady, Lucia is the most curious creature you'll ever meet. If I had a berry for every question she's asked me, I'd be the fattest pigeon in the whole world. Remember... A secret is only a secret if it remains unspoken. Giving her a wink, Pip remembered Bernard Booth telling her Churchill's secret animal army's motto, and she bowed to herself that she would not speak of them. But we're among friends, Lucia smiled at G.I. Joe. I'm sorry, honey, I didn't mean to pry. I was only trying to make our newest member and her umbrella feel welcome. You've got to admit they're not your everyday spies. The place where I lived in London was bombed, Pip said. 
suddenly losing her appetite. She put the nut she was eating on the ground and felt her whiskers droop on her cheeks. I lost my whole family that day. The umbrella is all I have left of them. We have lived inside it together, like all the other Hanway mice before us, for over a hundred years. It's beautiful, the white pigeon cooed, eyeing its silver handle, wrapped in carved fig leaves and inlaid with gold. Yes, it's very rare, Pip said after a pause, feeling her chest grow heavy with grief. She could still hear Papa's voice telling her their umbrella's history. It's one of the first to be used in England, and I'm taking it to the only umbrella museum in the whole world where it will be safe. My family always dreamed of going there one day. Where is there? It's in northern Italy. Nearby, ears pricked, and gradually the rest of Noah's Ark looked up from their food to listen. Northern Italy? Lucia said, cocking her head in surprise. But that's enemy territory. Why would you want to be there? I'm going to live with my mother's family. So if you're an Italian, you can't be here as a member of Churchill's secret animal army then. She is as far as you are concerned, Hans interrupted, staring sternly at the white pigeon. Not a whisker on his face moved and the pigeon blinked self-consciously before looking away. Aren't you, Pip? He looked over to her and immediately his scarred face softened. The little mouse smiled. She didn't mind Lucia asking about her and she wasn't sure why Hans did. You bet she is, G.I. Joe cooed. She's the youngest member we've ever recruited. She's damn brave too. She sailed down the River Thames alone. That's impressive, Lucia said, smiling at Pip. And hey, I'm sorry I asked. We all got our little secrets and don't worry, honey. She gave her a little wink. I won't tell anybody. I'm just so excited to have another girl in Noah's Ark. I hope you and me can be like sisters. Us girls need to stick together. Pip enjoyed the thought of having a sibling, especially a daring and pretty one like Lucia. Hans and G.I. Joe behaved as brothers and the rest of Noah's Ark seemed as close as family. It made sense for her to have a sister too. I'd like that. Pip nodded and smiled at her new friend, feeling close to her already. I'm so pleased, Lucia said, fondly embracing her in her white wings. You can share my coop and we'll have fun tonight without the boys. You'll see. But don't you want to go as well? Pip asked with surprise. She thought Lucia was as adventurous as she was. She was a messenger pigeon after all. Missions are always taken by small groups. It's safer that way. If we were to fail, more of us would die or get captured. Besides, are you sure you'd want to go? You couldn't take your umbrella with you. Pip looked at the umbrella and thought of Mama and Papa. It was true, she would never risk the umbrella on tonight's mission. But if she left it in the hollow and sneaked out to watch the mission while the rest of Noah's Ark was sleeping, no one would ever know.